So, uh, Mr. Fassel, we'll get this question first. Uh, it has to do with term limits. Congressman Gibson pledged to serve no more than four terms and is retiring after three. What is your position on term limits? Uh, I support term limits. Uh, I, when I ran for governor in 2006 against Elliot Spitzer, you may recall that election. I didn't win that election, some of you may recall. Uh, but the, the, the fact is, is that I supported term limits at the state level then. And, and really, I think my, my proposal was borne out uh, from experience. I said we should have term limits for the statewide elected officials, two terms and out. I said we should have term limits for the leadership in the legislature, majority leader, speaker, minority leader. Um, I think that it's vitally important that we have more change and churn in the system, in the leadership system that we have in Albany. And we talk about corruption, and it is a real problem. What a lot of people don't understand is that corruption is engendered in large part by big government. When the federal government, the state government, has their hand in every aspect of business, nonprofit, for profit businesses, guess what? people are gonna to try to influence that process. And look at what's, what's going on now with Andrew Cuomo and his Buffalo Billion and the scandals that have been alleged by the US Attorney. And the fact is, this was engendered by this notion that the government top down can decide economic development. That's why I wanna get rid of corporate welfare, get rid of things like ethanol subsidies, Create 100% depreciation. If you're in a business, you're like Rich Croce down in Viking in New Paltz, you buy a new piece of machinery that can help you be more productive and employ people, you depreciate it in year one. No multi-year depreciation schedules. Incentivize people broadly at the bottom of our economy, all over throughout the economy. Don't make in business incentives dependent upon whether some politician or some governor like Andrew Cuomo gives you and deigns to give you some economic development grant. Let the private sector economy work its will. That's the way, that's what built America, and that's how we can restore prosperity and hope for the vast majority of people in our country. Uh, so, so I also ran for governor. You may remember that. <laughs> um, I support term limits. And uh, when I'm in Congress, I would limit myself to uh, 10 years. I've spent a lot of time recruiting people to run for office, uh, traveling around, talking to, especially trying to recruit more women to run for office, more young people to run for office. And one of the reasons that I support term limits is that I love talking to a 25-year-old woman who can imagine herself uh, in that uh, in that role, I think I get uh, sorry, Yolanda. I think I'm on two this time. I get to have that wrong. Uh, yes, two minutes. Okay. Sorry. Yes, you're right. Um, sorry about that. Um, so so I so I do support term limits, but the big problem we have in, uh, with corruption in our system right now. I talked about part of it, but what. Uh, uh, how much time candidates are spending fundraising and, and people in Congress are spending fundraising. Another real problem we have is lobbying, and this really affects our open marketplace and having an open competitive marketplace. Because if you're a small or medium-sized business, you don't have a lobbyist. But if you're GE, you have a lobbyist. And in fact, you know, the, the big companies are spending millions and millions of dollars a year on lobbyists. And this isn't good for our economy. We want companies to be investing in making a better running shoe, not in having more access to a particular politician. It's not good for an open, thriving, innovative economy. So, so you have a company like GE that then spends millions of dollars and in 2011 spends uh, zero in federal income tax because it spent so much energy on lobbyists looking for loopholes and ways out of paying taxes. Well. If you're a local retailer, you don't have that. If you're, you know, Karen at Bob to Totem, you don't have that. So what, what, what's actually happening is the corruption in our lobbying system is corrupting also our economic system. And I believe in an open, competitive, innovative marketplace where the best ideas uh, win, and the lobbying is unfortunately undermining that. I've talked to Chris Gibson about this whole issue of uh, the number, of, the amount of time that people spend raising money, and 
He said, it's, it, it's not something he does, and I can tell you this, it's not something that I will do if I'm honored with the election by the people in this district. Um, I'm pl proud to say that unlike my opponent, uh, I've got over 40% of my contributions come from within this district. Uh, she has under 5%. And uh, so you have to ask your question as to who's actually supporting whom here. So when you, when you look at these issues in terms of government, big government is what engenders much, much of the corruption that we see. Ethanol subsidies, perfect example. They wreck your small engines. It re reduces the mileage in your car. It, it 40 percent of the corn grown in the United States goes for ethanol, distorts the world price for corn. And it's a screwball thing because of big government hand in hand with the corn growers, etc. I'm against ethanol subsidies and I'll fight this kind of corporate welfare. 